Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on October 5th, 2023. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update, as well earthquakes, volcanoes, and a look at world weather. Always starting out here, looking at the last 48 hours on our sun, was noting yesterday the plasma prominence erecting from the surface in the northern hemisphere. No major solar flares reported in the past 24 hours. Look at the last 48 or last 48 hours incoming. This is where we see that large plasma prominence, and as well, small sunspot regions turning into Earth-facing view. Look at the last 48 hours outgoing. Nice plasma shot there. And again, plasma prominence here on the surface of the sun. Closer look at all the activity with the plasma. Large plasma filaments stretched across the center, as noted in last night's video. Having a look at multi-spectrum here from some solar tornadoes and the most active regions pulsing there. Minor C-class solar flares, long duration, nothing major to report. We are under a G3 geomagnetic watch. Earlier today, KP levels reached 5. Having a look at 193 angstroms here. This is where we could see all of the heliosphere in action and plasma loops. Amazing imagery brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory mixed with daily events worldwide. Here are your sunspot regions. There are eight. And another look here at sunspot regions in action. Time lapse sped up here, 48 hour period. Current space weather conditions, as I said, G1 minor geomagnetic storm impacts. Solar winds coming in at 463 kilometers per second. Solar X-ray flux just recently showing two moderate C-class or three so moderate C-class solar flares. And it kind of seems to be repeating itself from two days ago. KP5 level reached earlier today. Having a look at the highest frequency map, the DRAP absorption map showing all of the cosmic energy penetration across the planet. And then looking here at Lasco 2, this is the last five days of imagery brought to you by Lasco, showing all of the cosmic energy leaving the sun. Big CME taking off there, noted in last night's video. Also watch for a sun diving comet coming from the southeast corner. And as well in the most latest imagery here, watch for another CME coming out from the right hand side. Looking at the ISWA Space Prediction Spiral brought to you by Enlil, still only showing the coronal mass ejection coming from the backside of our sun. Not much has changed. Let's get to earthquakes the past 24 hours as we do have an earthquake event underway in Japan. Another 6.1 earthquake reported today. Izu Islands. And look at all of the aftershocks through the region. Something is definitely shifting there through the Philippines plate. Papua New Guinea reporting a 5.4 and then some deep Earthquakes here as well. Lavuka, Fiji, 563 kilometer depth, and as well a 534 kilometer depth. Hawaii saw increased action throughout the day today. They should be on watch. Southeast Rift getting ready to buckle open again. Looking at 64 earthquakes the past 24 hours across the island here, but about 40 of them just southeast of the Kilauea summit. Caldera, as you can see, the previous eruptions there, those black lines, it could be getting ready to burst open again. So heads up, Hawaii. We're going to be keeping an eye on that over the next 48 hours. USGS is reporting 271 earthquakes, 24-hour period. That is slightly above average. Minor activity across the central U.S. and as well north and northwest of Yellowstone, Island Park, Idaho as well. Minor activity up into the Pacific Northwest. 
and nothing major to report across California. No major swarms. Quick look here over Puerto Rico. 12, only reporting 12 earthquakes through the region. So most of the activity coming in Japan and as well Hawaii. 17 earthquakes here. Izu Islands, Japan region. Sofu Seamount, just north of it. Carrying on here with earthquakes past 24 hours. Minor earthquake there. South American plate, Chile, but deep. And this is a look at the last seven days for shakers across the world. We were forecasting a large earthquake, what, three or four days ago. We were under earthquake watch and it happened and it is still going here south of Japan in the Western Pacific. Lots of deep earthquakes the past seven days, hence the earthquake warnings and watches that came out. Doesn't seem to be very balanced though. Most of the action coming out of the Pacific West and Northwest, up into Kamchatka, Aleutian Islands with all the volcanoes that are erupting through the region there. There's about 10 Speaking of which, this is a look at the SO2, sulfur dioxide emissions map. Huge particulates across northern Pacific and Alaska right now and across the United States. Thanks to the 10 volcanoes that are erupting through the Aleutian Islands and up into Kamchatka. And as well, leftover remnant wildfire smoke from Northwest Territories and B.C., but look at this, it's sweeping right across even Europe and into Russia. Some intense sulfur dioxide emissions right now. And that's not from us. That's from the 61 volcanoes that are erupting around the world. As last reported here with daily events worldwide. Let's have a look at the Pacific Disaster Center showing the most recent satellite imagery from around the world. And the most recent volcanoes getting updated today. We've got Sabancaya in Peru. Also, Ubinas in Peru. Popocatépetl in Mexico. Santa Maria in Guatemala. Simru, Indonesia. Tacono in Indonesia. Sangay in Ecuador. Nevadas de Ruiz, Colombia. Fuego, Guatemala. Reventador in Ecuador. Mayan in the Philippines. So that's about a dozen volcanoes getting updated today. So heads up, stay safe, stay aware, prepared everybody. Air quality is going to be nasty. Going to see some strange skies over the next little bit. We do have Tropical Storm Felipe, who has been spinning since, I believe, a September 18th. September 23rd. So has been spinning now for 10 days and will be making landfall uh, through the Atlantic provinces and northeastern United States. Tropical Storm Felipe, most likely as a Category 1. We've also got Tropical Storm Lydia, who is in the Eastern Pacific and will be turning into a Cat 3, but nothing major to report there. Long-range forecast could be scooting into the United States. Also got Typhoon Koinu, who swept across Taiwan as a Category 3 Typhoon. Eyewall has been demolished and is now heading southward. Quick look here, satellite imagery across Southeast Asia, Africa, long lines of moisture here above a very large low pressure system in the Southern Hemisphere. Just have a quick look at this big bad boy. Things are ramping up, folks. Polar vortex is getting ready to set up in the Northern Hemisphere as it is being pretty drastic and oblonged in the Southern Hemisphere right now. As noted a few videos ago, wanted to give you an update on what it looks like now. And the things have already changed in the Northern Hemisphere. Winds are starting to pick up. We've got our full rotation around the North Pole with increasing winds and high pressure ridge north of the Aleutian Islands, and that is going to help fuel in 
some winter weather. As it was snowing in northern Saskatchewan early this morning, some pretty cold temperatures dipped into southern or northern Saskatchewan. Polar vortex is setting up. Interesting. Please stay tuned. We will be sharing these images. Having a look here at the five-day forecast brought to you by Windy.com, a low-pressure center about to affect Ontario, and it's going to move northward. And then by Saturday into Sunday, Tropical Storm Felipe will be making landfall at the same time as a pretty strong low on the west coast through northern BC. And then a watch for Felipe to gain strength and continue its velocity or its low-pressure center south of the Hudson's Bay and then a big mixed bag of precipitation and stormy conditions through the United States as we do have an interesting low here developing in the long range forecast heading into northeastern United States and eastern Canada big low there could be super storm scenario too many lows all in close vicinity stay tuned for the latest forecast as things can change quickly. Having a look over Europe and Africa, as noted yesterday, multiple low pressure systems around Europe right now. Watch for them to start making landfall. And then a big low here developing in the long range for Russia. But look at these systems in the Northern Hemisphere getting ready to gain some strength and some cold temperatures and a lot of snow across Sweden and Finland. Overlooking West Pacific, Southeast Asia and Australia. Long range forecast, couple systems affecting China and its Southern Japan, but no major typhoons developing in the long range. One system here could develop into something strong, but looks like it's going to miss Japan. Much love, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the Daily Do, keeping humanity aware and prepared. Much love. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your Daily Do. Bye-bye now. I'm back. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe. Share with your friends and family from across the world.